critical of his approach to that situation when in in actuality I feel that he's almost commendable in that situation in the sense that he doesn't use any physical aggression. Um, he displays a firearm. I mean, he, it's unfortunate he didn't use it. He didn't, felt he didn't have to use it. Do you have any you know commentary there? Well, that video wasn't that big of a deal to me. You know, I, I probably would like myself. I wouldn't have recorded um, at all because you could. It's pretty easy to pick up when people are just having an argument and when someone's you know actually having trouble because you know when they realized he was recording, everyone either told him to stop or. Uh, the other person step behind the car to try and hide from the camera because they don't want their personal business on the internet or on a recording. Um, yeah, I mean, the woman charging him, she wasn't in the right, but I don't think Cantwell was, you know, 100% there. I mean, and that's, that's kind of the same thing Cantwell did to somebody else. I think the very next night someone recorded him and he uh, ran at him and attacked them. Are you speaking about an uh, incident with Graham Coulson? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, um, that was something I noticed that on your website that video is no longer avail uh, available. There's maybe one or two videos that really? I think the huh. links have since been removed. Maybe a fan of Cantwell or Cantwell himself like reported them as harassment to YouTube or something, I don't know, but... Yeah. Um, and, that, and that's not like claiming that he did, I have no idea, I'm just saying. Right. Um, that was uh, actually, uh, there's a video of myself interacting with Cantwell downtown one day, I just happened to see him and wanted to ask him questions about his interactions. He had been living across the street from me at the time. I no longer lived there. He no longer lives there. Um, but uh, he had had interactions with this guy, Matt Schmidt, who's recently been making a name for himself around town through yeah. his, his public arguments with JP. Um, so my, I wrote a critique of Cantwell about uh, how he and this other neighbor were competing for the Worst Neighbor Award. And uh, my ap approach to that is, like, he, he does some things, like, I try to give, you know, one thing I'm concerned about is like when we, when we address people's misbehaviors that like we're you know fair to them and that what they do good is addressed and I, so I tried with that article to say like what he does well like trying to approach his neighbor initially like calmly and like speak to him mm -hmm. but then eventually like yelling and cursing at him and yeah. doing these unnecessary things before storming off. Um, from your perspective, I mean I guess I can't ask how you've seen others change that are like in his presence, but like, um, I don't know, from your perspective, do you feel that uh, Cantwell himself is ever unduly accused of, uh, like, negative behaviors? I guess some would say that he was tied to uh, uh, a public, like, nudity issue that, that would, like, occur. I don't really need to name any names there, because, like, <laughs> nobody, I think all the parties involved would rather die out, but yeah. um, he was, like, accused of releasing these photos of someone, and I guess he, he did actually have nothing to do with it, from my understanding, so... Other than what I just pointed out, do you feel like he unduly, or anyone else, like unduly gets negative attention based on their positions internally? I think at this point, because there's such a huge history of all these things Cantwell has done, he's kind of free game. You know, I, I would you know drop down on him and, and kind of uh, be a little nicer if he would actually talk to me person to person. But he doesn't. He doesn't do that. I think he enjoys being hated, and I think he likes you know that that sort of bad attention. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to do it just for the fun of it, um, but I, there's there's certainly a lot of the, uh, gossiping r going around where people do get um, negative attention when they don't really deserve it. And uh, what you were pointing to about wanting to be like the most hated, I'd say that's probably evident with uh, his use of the N word recently. That yeah. was uh, you know pretty famously shared. Now that actually did result in some action as far as associates of his distancing themselves publicly. Um, in the sense if he was removed from Free Talk Live indefinitely, who knows if he'll be back, if when. Um, but And I think that was mostly Mark who pushed for that. Um, I, I can't imagine that Ian would, that would be his decision, or like that would be something he would vote into. Because they, they, those two seem um, pretty fairly close. Well, I've heard that the argument was that advertisers would begin dropping from the show if there was an N-word guy on the show. Yeah, definitely, and yeah. It's funny because, like, it, many people may know the South Park episode where Randy uses the N-word on TV and he mm -hmm. becomes, like, famously known and, like, sort of ostracized for it. And um, the, the episode is about how this sort of ostracism is wrong at the same time as, like, the... But, like, it doesn't make the word okay. It, so it's, it's, it's such a very complex thing that uh, Cantwell's just of it... Personally, I, I don't feel like it makes any sense as justification for 
using an epithet because somebody else uh, called him white. And right. I, I mean, if, if anything, he could say that he could call them black back, but then to, I'd say, escalate to use, uh, to use like profane language, uh, profane epithets. But um, yeah, that's one of those things. It's like, should it be the words that make people ostracize and back away? Like, I'm glad that people are calling to attention like his bad behavior, but I almost feel like it's really uh, a disappointment as far as where things stand that it has to get to a racial level. Um, like the violence wasn't enough, or the violence has been overlooked yeah. before there's uh, any sort of like internal, uh, internal perspective on this. Well, I think that probably brought um, brought the issues home with Free Talk Live because if Mark thinks there's a risk of losing advertisers, then it becomes much more real for them than you know being able to just make excuses for the guy and move on. Because mm -hmm. then they have to continuously deal with him being on the show and advertisers being suspicious of him. So. It was probably better for them to just kick him out. Um, I think he recently became a member of the CAC again. So he's, he's definitely still um, a part of that circle, I guess you could say. Right. Um, well, as you know, I guess it's worth pointing out for this, since I did mention that I was involved with the CAC previously, that I have not been a member there. Um, somebody paid for my membership about two months ago and wanted me to vote on some things, and I did because they, they asked me to, and I felt it wasn't unimportant. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you know, uh, my association with the place has been less because of the the change in policy is not based on the change of the actors who were previously deemed to have caused problems, um, or at least presented problems. Um, so another, another sort of critique I wanted to make of your approach um, was that I noticed in, in one of your articles, I think it was the uh, the King uh, the King Baby article, you have a picture of Cantwell in the nude. Some people may, uh, yeah. there may be some level of shock value there that draws people away. <laughs> and there was also some commentary about his vagina stinking. <laughs> um, do you think that maybe posting that sort of thing leads people to believe that what you're posting isn't that serious and that it's more of an, it's intended to be an attack piece or intended to be a hit piece? Yeah, there's definitely a, a weird mix in there where I've got all these serious things and I jump into just joke things that I'm making up. Um, it's kind of hard because I don't take Chris Cantwell very serious at all, but I've got people that talk to me and they've got these kind of terrible stories. And, uh, like the guy that's, you know, talking about how he was stealing and he's been arrested for rape and all this. And I, I can't verify that stuff, but I'm willing to put his voice out there along with my own side by side and just put it all in the one thing. So, uh, having been arrested for rape, uh, is it your, your contention that somebody, or is it your contention or somebody else's contention that Christopher Cantwell was arrested for sexual assault at some point? Yeah, apparently he was arrested for rape. Whether it actually happened, that's a different story. And um, uh, apparently uh, his brother was arrested for sodomy as well. That may have been related to the same event. And this was all in New York before he was a part of the movement when he was a, a drug dealer and all that. And I think he's been pretty fairly open about his past, just not, you know, with these kind of stories. Is there a way to verify any of that information with criminal background checks? Or I imagine that costs money. Yeah, well, I would imagine you can buy in a, a check and find some sort of stuff, but even that, it's, it's not always, uh, it doesn't always tell the whole story, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, those are pretty serious allegations. Um, uh, people just pass them over. I would like to hear Chris respond to them, but it sounds like yeah. rather than responding them, he's choosing to just ignore or discredit the people yeah. addressing them. Yeah, and I originally um, started to get into all this because of the, he made claims against me about how I hacked his website. And, uh, at first, I was just trying to talk to him about it, and he refused. So I started building up in this uh, this case against Cantwell because I figured as long as he's going to lie about me, I'm going to tell these stories, maybe create a few lies on the side and, and create this, uh, this whole tale of uh, ep or, uh, Chris Cantwell. Um, one thing that I, I found sort of interesting too about your, uh, your writing is you're, you're essentially writing a blog, but you say on there I'm not a blogger. No, it's, I update it like maybe once a month, just whatever's on my mind at the, at the time, I throw it up there as a place to put it all together. It's okay. certainly not meant to be like a regular thing or a, a professional thing. It's just a, just kind of a, every once in a while I've got something to say, so I say it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so one of one of the things you said about uh, Robin Hooding is that arguments are for teenagers who don't know how to communicate. Holding up signs and filling parking meters are for people uncomfortable with the idea of outreach. Um, would you say that like Robin Hooding itself isn't really that much of a form of outreach? Because I would contend that there's a lot of people that, because it's a public activity, they see what you're doing, they interact with you, they ask yeah, questions. Yeah. I've got, I don't have a huge problem with Robin Hooding, or really much like, I mean, that's great that people's doing it, but I'd kind of like to see um, a little more active outreach. Like my suggestions for, uh, for uh, Robin Hooding was to actually talk to business owners and try to do a petition so they can take over those uh, parking meters and start to make that movement towards privatizing and you know go through the court system and all this and at least th at least there you're stepping towards something rather than um, just trying to give people information I think it, I mean everyone's always trying to share what they think and it's just you know a lot of people talking <laughs> all right um Another thing sort of Robin Hood related uh, to bring up about Cantwell is um, you've another, just to sort of clarify like uh, background that maybe Cantwell, this is sort of an instance in which maybe Cantwell's getting blamed for something that he didn't really have anything to do with. I'm, I don't believe he interacted with uh, Alan Givitz, who was a former parking enforcer here in Keene who ended up quitting his job. Mm -hmm. um, but in one of your articles you did say uh, many people have decided to uh, Many people have decided to ignore people like Chris Cantwell altogether. The veteran who quit his job to get away from Chris relentless, Chris's relentless and useless harassment wasn't the only one. Um, I would contend that I don't believe Chris interacted much or at all with Alan Givitz. Um, and in fact, one could point to uh, Alan Givitz hasn't really, uh, he hasn't really held any particular job too long since he's been back from Iraq. Um, so. I don't yeah. know, in that sense, I'd say there's a little, a little more to that story than, like, or maybe Chris is catching a little blame for something that... He might be, because I'm, I'm pretty much going off of uh, the Colbert Report, which is, is, of course, not going to tell the whole, and whole that, story. Yeah, yeah, specifically, like, looking at it, that was not a news piece, that was a comedy piece. Yeah, like, yeah. The way they set that up, so... And kind of the alternative go, is going through the huge amount of content on Robin Hooding, which is uh, very difficult to do to find all the original information and... I know Colbert's team went through all that, but you know they've got like a huge paid team that can actually go oh, one, through it all. One thing I recommend to people, of course, it's boring, but it's where the the facts that pe that every uh, both sides wanted on the record are there is the the court documents, mm -hmm. um, or even or not just the documents, but the videos of court with the testimony from the parking enforcers. Yeah. Because if you compare the lawsuit that was filed and the wording of the affidavits with what they stated in court. There's such a contrast where it's there's all of these accusations about they bump into us, they follow us into the bathroom. Yeah. Um, things that they never accused any individual of doing at any point. They didn't say on this date, this Robin Hooder bumped into me. So it was one of those things that's just like, well, who did it? Maybe it never happened because they doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, I, I don't believe any Robin Hooder ever followed anyone into a bathroom. Um, is it possible they went into a bathroom while a parking enforcer happened to be coming out? There's public bathrooms. Like, yeah. it happens. But... Um, yeah, the, the Robin Hood case, I'd say, is a good example of where you have a, a great amount of fame and publicity given to this very small um, this very small subset of activity. It's just myself and a few friends and a sit, few city bureaucrats on this few blocks that there are meters in Keene. Um, but yeah, it's interesting how much attention is given to Keene, New Hampshire. Obviously, <laughs> you've relocated yourself to this area because you found it interesting. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I came up here for... Like, like I said originally, I came up here for the community, not really the activism, and, and hopefully there's not too much, there seems to be some judgment there for the people who are, you know, out there every day rather than, you know, working 50 hours a week and can't really do it all, all the time. Uh, so it's a good point. You feel there's a little bit of a contrast between the liberty community and the, the liberty uh, activism element itself, like those, they're almost like factions, or? Oh yeah, I mean, there's... I think uh, 2,000 people up at Pork Fest, and, and there's a lot of people in this state who are part of the, the Liberty community. I meet them all the time in my roots. And then you've got this small, you know, the Keniac group that, you know, the, the media guys who always got drama going back and forth, and they seem to be a very, a very loud minority rather than, you know, you've got a ton of people who are just here for the community and to live their lives as freely as possible. Mm -hmm.
Well, cool. Um, I think that was all of the points I wanted to address with you. I mean, I think it would be great if, if there was more verification for some of the more serious allegations. Um, but I think it does speak to the fact that, that Chris is unwilling to address them himself or even to look at yeah, them. Yeah, I think he would be the first person to talk to about them rather than doing uh, background checks. I think it's better to get the story from, pe from people uh, directly. Uh, yeah. And one other uh, quick thing I remembered was uh, your allegations against Chris that had been relayed to you was that he had stolen property, not that he had uh, used robbery, right? Um, well, there's... The thievery thing was apparently he was using a system where he's, he was taking a few cents out of thousands of bank accounts at a time and funneling that back into his own. How did he have access to those accounts? Were they clients of his? They, I'm assuming it's some sort of um, hacking job that um, either he bought or put together that was making it all happen. And um, this was part of when he was dealing drugs. Like There was another accusation that where and this comes from a friend who's known the guy since high school and has helped him out through a lot of this stuff. Um, but he said he had a landlord that he owed a pound of weed to, and because he didn't have that, he knew he was next felony. So he went and bought an illegal gun in New York, planted in his apartment, called the cops, sent the guy to jail. And um, I mean, there's a lot of little stories like this that, where you, that you hear about Cantwell. Have you got, so uh, the story there was not from the party that had the police called on them, though. It was from somebody that had, so that was like hearsay from someone else. Right, like, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it raises the question, like, it, it, it's, it's almost worth somebody going into New York and, like, asking these people. And coincidentally, I happened to be, uh, the first few years of my life were spent on Long Island, New York. Sure. Uh, so I, I, I'm kind of somewhat familiar with the, the neighborhoods that Cantwell is from. I mean, I know the same people, but different generations. Right. Yeah, I tried to get some names that maybe, you know, I could double down on the story a little bit, uh, but the guy I talked to seemed kind of nervous about it all because this is a bad world they're talking about, and he didn't, he didn't want to 